Body language expert says King Charles let himself go at recent royal event. Royal enthusiasts are quick to inquire about King Charles's well-being these days as a result of his cancer diagnosis. However, it appears His Majesty is in good spirits and doing quite well. On Saturday, August 31st, King Charles attended the Royal Horticultural Society of Aberdeen's 200th Flower Show at Duthie Park, where he enjoyed colourful floral displays and met with RHSA members. And according to body language expert Darren Stanton, the King looked genuinely joyful and at ease while engaging with others at the event. Welcome to Royal Pancakes. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you don't miss any news about the British monarchy. On behalf of Betfair Casino, he told me, we saw Charles making a conscious effort to get stuck in at the flower show. He was consistently involved and showed his fun, confident and humorous side without even noticing. It all came to him easily. As seen in the above photo, the king is all smiles as he chats with chairman Brian Grant and views the vegetable competition. Stanton continued, we saw him laughing and his posture was very loose, proving he was able to let himself go. The king wanted to connect with people. We know this is genuine as he was actively listening the whole time by maintaining strong eye contact, shaking people's hands and even leaning in closer when interacting in conversation. These gestures can also be seen in a few shots of the king conversing with eight-year-old Oliver Keith. As he shows King Charles a paper crown he made at the flower show, the royal leans in slightly and keeps his focus on Keith while listening intently. As it turns out, the king's easygoing demeanor has become quite common at public events. Stanton explained, when carrying out his royal duties, Charles now appears to be very relaxed and completely at ease. He takes it in his stride naturally without showing signs of distress or nervousness. In May, the RHSA announced King Charles as a patron for the organization. At the time, President Keith Weed said in a statement, as a passionate and knowledgeable gardener, advocate for the planet, and champion for environmental issues, we could not wish for a better patron than King Charles. The King will learn about efforts to support those impacted by melanoma, one of the most prevalent cancers in Australia. King Charles and Queen Camilla's Australia, and Samoa tour itinerary is taking shape. On September 10, Buckingham Palace shared more information about the King and Queen's upcoming tour, announcing that the royal couple will be travelling abroad from Friday October 18 to Saturday October 26. The visit is significant as it's the monarch's first tour to Commonwealth countries since he became King. It also marks his first major international trip following his cancer diagnosis earlier this year. Their Majesties the King and Queen will undertake an autumn tour from Friday 18, Saturday 26 of October 2024. This will include a royal visit to Australia, state visit to the independent state of Samoa and attendance at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, CHOGM, 2024, the palace said in a statement, verifying speculation that the king would attend Shogm, which kicks off in Samoa on October 21. The summit is held biennially, and Charles is head of the Commonwealth Association of 56 Nations. The king's visit to Australia will be His Majesty's first to a realm as monarch, whilst the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa is the first the king will attend as head of the Commonwealth, it continued. In both countries, their Majesties' engagements will focus on themes designed to celebrate the best of Australia and Samoa, as well as reflecting aspects of the King and Queen's work. The palace gave a rundown of the busy schedule the King and Queen planned to pack into nine days, from a kick-off with the Australian Prime Minister and visits to the Australian War Memorial, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Memorial to the National Botanic Gardens. The statement alluded that the King and Queen, 77, will make some separate engagements, and said that the Sovereign will meet with two pioneering medical experts in melanoma treatment. The King, who has this year been receiving treatment for cancer, will meet Professor Georgina Long and Professor Richard Scolia, both Australians of the year, and will hear about the work they do to help those affected by melanoma, 
one of Australia's most common cancers, the palace outlined. Long and Skoyer are both professors at the University of Sydney and co-medical directors of the Melanoma Institute Australia, and won the award together for their work to save lives from skin cancer. After Skoyer was diagnosed with incurable brain cancer in June 2023, Long developed a series of groundbreaking treatments inspired by melanoma breakthroughs. He later became the world's first brain cancer patient to undergo pre-surgery combination immunotherapy, an experimental treatment hoping to advance the understanding of brain cancer, according to the Australian of the Year Awards. The King's meeting with the professors will have added meaning as it's understood that he is continuing his own cancer treatment. The palace announced in February that the sovereign was diagnosed with an undisclosed form of cancer following his treatment for a benign enlarged prostate in January. A spokesman clarified he does not have prostate cancer. After a three-month period of postponing public-facing duties the King, 75, resumed forward-facing work on April 30 and has been busy ever since. When his return to work was announced in late April, Buckingham Palace described the King's treatment as ongoing and shared a positive sentiment from his doctors. His Majesty's treatment program will continue, but doctors are sufficiently pleased with the progress made, so far that the King is now able to resume a number of public-facing duties. Forthcoming engagements will be adapted where necessary to minimize any risks to His Majesty's continued recovery, a Buckingham Palace spokesperson said at the time. With that being said, while King Charles and Queen Camilla would typically visit the Commonwealth country of New Zealand during a long-distance trip to Australia, it had been ruled out due to medical advice. A spokesperson previously explained that the King's doctors have advised that such an extended program should be avoided at this time, to prioritise His Majesty's continued recovery. In close consultation with the Australian and New Zealand Prime Ministers, and with due regard for the pressures of time and logistics, it has therefore been agreed to limit the visit to Samoa and Australia only, the spokesperson said when the Australia and Samoa trip was announced in July. Buckingham Palace added that the royals send their warmest thanks and good wishes to all parties for their continued support and understanding. During a solo engagement to open a new cancer centre at the Royal United Hospital in Bath, England on September 3, Queen Camilla said her husband was doing very well when a well-wisher asked after him, the Mirror reported. Other plans for the couple's autumn tour include a community barbecue in Western Sydney, outings for the Queen connected to her work on literacy and ending domestic violence, an Ava Fatipu ceremony welcome in Samoa, stops for the King reflecting themes of sustainability and biodiversity, a key theme of Chogman joint appearance at the Chogma opening ceremony plus a dinner and reception.